Throughout all of history, many priceless artifacts and pieces of literature have been lost to violence, disaster, war, and time. None, however, are as famous as the Library of Alexandria. The purpose of the library was as a universal library where scholars would come to expand their minds on the vast sources and research of foreign countries. The founder of the library was Demetrius of Phileron, a former Athenian politician who sought refuge in the court of Ptolemy I after his fall from power. Taking advantage of Demetrius's vast knowledge, Ptolemy soon tasked him with the creation of the Moseion, also known as the Museum of Alexandria. The library was a portion of this museum. methods in order to expand its resources. There are many infamous stories about the length that the Ptolemies would go through in order to expand the library. One of said methods was to search every single ship that entered Alexandria's harbor for books. If a book was found, it would be taken to the library in order to decide if it would be returned to the owner or if it would be confiscated and replaced with a copy. Another method of acquiring books was the purchasing of said books from different places. More specifically, Athens and Rhodes were the largest book markets at the time existed. The biggest section of the Library of Alexandria's collection was in Greek. The second largest section was in Egyptian. Ptolemy I encouraged his scholars to amass various records of their past traditions and heritage. He also had them translate these records into Greek in order to make them available to Greek scholars. Other than these two sections, there is evidence that the library held literature for many other nations. Some examples are the History of Babylonia, written by Barossus, a Chaldean priest, Chaldea is an ancient land in southern Babylonia, which is also known as modern southern Iraq. Buddhist writing would also be held in the library as a consequence of the exchange of embassies by Ashoka, the last emperor of the Mauryan dynasty of India, and Ptolemy II. The work in the collection were organized into the following divisions, rhetoric, law, epic, tragedy, Comedy, Lyric Poetry, History, Medicine, Mathematics, Natural Science, and Miscellaneous. This method of organization instantly became a future model for works of the same nature. Additionally, they would buy different versions of the same work, such as Homeric works, from Chios, from Sinope, and from Massilia. The estimated total amount of books housed within the Library of Alexandria vary from source to source. The earliest figure from the 3rd century BCE states that it held, quote, more than 200,000 books, end quote. However, a medieval text by John Tisetus states that there were, quote, 42,000 books in the outer library, in the inner library, 400,000 mixed books, plus 90,000 unmixed books, end quote. An even higher estimate is of 700,000 books was reported between the 2nd and 4th century CE. With the Museum of Alexandria, the library was able to establish itself as a proper research center. In addition to its close location to the harbor and being situated within the grounds of the royal palace, which placed it under the supervision of the royal family, assisted in its rapid growth of its collection. It soon exceeded the amount of room available for the acquired works.
It was then deemed necessary to establish an offshoot library in order to house the surplus books. This daughter library was built at the Temple of Serapis. No one really knows much about the true fate of the Library of Alexandria. With no primary sources on the destruction of the library, there are many arguments on when and how it was destroyed. In the following theories that I will present to you, you will notice that there are many discrepancies on what century it occurred in. There are many disagreements on the location of the library within the city, how large it was, how many buildings it contained, how many scholars lived there, etc. I will now go into the three theories that exist on who and how the library The first theory places the blame for the burning of the Library of Alexandria on Julius Caesar. The circumstances of said situation occurred in 48 BC when Caesar was cut off by an Egyptian fleet at Alexandria after pursuing Pompey into Egypt. Due to being greatly outnumbered in enemy territory, Caesar ordered that the ships in the harbor be set on fire. This fire spread, eventually burning down the Egyptian fleet and part of the city where the library once stood. However, while Caesar wrote of starting the fire, there was no mention of it, the burning of the library. But some state that his omission of this event meant nothing considering that he would frequently not include unflattering facts while writing his own history. This is the most widely believed theory on how the library burned down. The second theory places the blame of the burning of the library on the fall of Theophilus, Patriarch of Alexandria in the 14th century AD. The story goes that a mob inspired by his efforts to establish Christianity as the supreme religion set fire to several of the pagan aspects of the city, including the library. However, the accounts of this event, more specifically named the Daughter Library at the Temple of Serapis and not the Great Library itself, which adds to even more confusion on how the library itself burned down. The final theory was that the library was burned down by the order of Caliph Omar after the Muslim conquest of Alexandria in 641 AD. The story goes that upon learning that, quote, a great library containing all the knowledge of the world, end quote, the conquered general asked Omar instructions on what to do. In response, Omar had been quoted saying the works held within the library Quote, will either contradict the Quran, in which they are heresy, or they will agree to it, so they are superfluous. End quote. So, allegedly, the scriptures held within the library were destroyed by being used as tinder to warm the bathhouses of the entire city. It is said that this process took an entire month to complete. However, the quote stating that it took up to six months to burn all the works held within the library by Omar was only written down from 300 to 500 years afterwards this alleged event. In addition, the facts condemning the caliph were written by Bishop Gregory Bar Hebreus, a Christian who spent a lot of his time writing about Muslim atrocities without much historical documentation. With all the technological advancements of the future, it is highly unlikely we will ever learn what truly happened to the Great Library of Alexandria. The tragic events that led up to the destruction of priceless scrolls, literature, and research will always be a great mystery. Even so, which of the provided theories do you believe is true?